to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Basically, in today's lecture, we are going to continue with our seventh chapter that is active and passive safety system. Under this particular domain, we are already covered up with the definition part. We are discussing about the different tests which is related to the active and passive safety system. So, our next topic in this particular chapter is a fish hook test. As the name suggests, there will be the motion of the vehicle in a similar way as the fish is actually traveling inside a sea. Such kind of pattern a vehicle is allowed to travel on a road and we are going to actually evaluate how much the vehicle stable is that how many chances are rollover are there by the help of this kind of fish hook test. So, as shown in this particular image, we can have this idea that the vehicle is allowed to travel in a zigzag path of way and we need to check the stability part. Actually, vehicle is attached with this kind of different sensors as shown in the below diagram and from that particular sensors, we can get the value of how much ground clearance has been kept when the vehicle is traveled in that particular zigzag way. So, from that we can actually get the idea about the stability of the vehicle. So, this is how the particular fish hook test has been carried out just to evaluate the stability part of the vehicle. The next test is the head restraint test. We focus very less on that particular part that is the head restraint. But whenever the accident happens, there can be a chances of this particular neck part getting damaged or the spare can be a dis located. So, we need to have a proper study of this particular head restraint, right. For that, we need to have the two dimensions very clear in our mind that is about a vertical height and the horizontal gap. These two things of the head restraint must be in a proper way. If it is in a proper position, then whenever the accident happens, that would be a minimum damage. We need to actually evaluate that what is the motion of the particular body when the accident happens. We are having this three different stages and whenever we are traveling in a very straight ahead positions, the head part would be located as shown in the first view. But whenever the accident happens, front collision is there and you suddenly moves backward. There would be a backward movement of this particular neck part. Again, it will try to come back in its own momentum. So, there would be again a frontal movement. Now, this head part, neck part specifically can uh, lead to a huge damage. So, that uh, head restraint if it is located in a perfect position, then this damage can be avoided. So, we are having this three different images with us which can give you the proper measurement. We need to attach the different calipers by which this particular horizontal gap and the vertical height can be adjusted. But the best part is the correct image which is shown in the first view that the center part of the head must be lying with the center part of the head restraint. That is the perfect and the correct position, right. Apart from that, the particular gap must be minimum, right. If it is having a higher gap, then also it is not uh, said as a correct position, although the center position is maintained as shown in the second figure. And as shown in this particular third figure, uh, which the heart, uh, vertical height is not proper. In such, under such scenario also it can lead to a great damage. So, we need to have a proper idea or the proper dimensional arrangement of this particular head restraint. Now, let us understand one very very interesting topic that is the end cap ratings. In the earlier lecture, I had already discussed about the particular crash test and the ratings which is attached with the particular uh, car. We need to have a rating systems by which we can evaluate how does the car safe is, right. But the interesting part is that we are not having a pass fail criteria in India. We are just giving the rating system, right. So, it is not getting mandatory for most of the cars. For such reasons, the car is being homologated as per the Indian norms, but it is having a very very, very poor ratings as far as NCAP ratings are concerned, right. But just to broaden your vision, I am with certain case studies of the uh, 5 star rating cars in India because the trend is changing nowadays. Indian people are looking towards the uh, particular safer car nowadays. So, first car 
is the Mahindra XUV which is having a 5 star rating based on the safety system which is available with that. It is having a 7 airbags, it is having the electronic stability programs, hill start assist so that the car remains stable during hill driving, ABS with the EBD, it is having a corner braking control, isofix mounts, front parking sensors, normally we hear about the rear parking sensors but it is having a frontal parking sensors as well, heated ORVMs outside rear view mirrors are being heated so whenever there is a rainy conditions the vision cannot be disturbed. All four disc brakes are given rear parking cameras with the dynamic assistance, right. The next car that is a Tata Nexon, from this actually car the trend was reversed, people are looking towards the Tata cars more and more because of the awardance of this particular 5 star rating and that has been awarded with due to the presence of the dual front airbags. ESP system, electronic traction control system, emergency brake assistance system, heel hold assistance, brake disc wiping, ABS with the electronic brake force distribution, isofix mount and the rear fix parking assistant cameras. This all together put the next one into the 5 star rated category. The third one is the Tata Ultros, again in the Tata segment itself the second car which is awarded with the 5 star. They had actually replicated most of the features which was given into the Tata Nexon. Due to the success of the Tata Nexon, they had actually replicated all the safety system in the particular Ultros, right, which is the dual front airbags, ABS with the EBD, corner stability, reverse parking cameras, isofix, voice alerts, parking assistance, height adjustable seat belts, and the fog lamps, right. Again the fourth one that is a Tata, Tiago and Tigor, same again in the Tata category which is actually awarded with the 4 star category. But the Tata car sale has been uh, actually uh, the scenario of the car sales of Tata has been changed when uh, from that point they are actually focusing on the safety part. This car is having the dual front airbags, ABS with the EVD corner stability, most of the features which is been present in the next one part. Some of the features are not there, for that reason it is awarded with the 4 star category. The fifth car that is the Mahindra Marazo, right, again Mahindra is a, again a group which is again focusing on this particular safety part of the car. This is having dual front airbags, disc brakes, ABS with EBD, isofix mount, rear parking cameras and sensors and as well as the cornering lamps. That's all put together Marazo into the particular 4 star category. And the last car, but as it is in the Maruti segment, I am focusing on this particular car. These are the Indian make cars, but still they are now focusing on this particular safety aspect. Otherwise, most of the Indian make cars were igno ignoring this particular NCAP system because Indian people is having a tendency just to look towards the particular mileage, right? We are not focused about the particular safety aspect. But the trend has been changing nowadays, most of the safety cars are selling at a faster pace. This Maruti Vitara Breza is having a dual front airbags, ABS system with EBD, reverse parking camera and sensors, wheel hold assistance, isofix mount, high speed warning alert, rear wiper and washer, seat pilot reminder for the front passengers. Although this high speed warning alert, seat belt reminder is getting common nowadays and it becomes mandatory also. Now, but still on the other darker side if we see some of the cars are also been awarded with the zero star ratings such as Maruti Celario, Maruti Eco, Hyundai Eon, Scorpio of Mahindra, Renault Quid. These are all of the cars which is awarded with either zero or even two star ratings, right. But still it is not mandatory that's why it is actually clearing the homologation norms because it is not having a pass fail like criteria we are just giving a rating based on the how the car safe is. But uh, government of India has actually improvising in this particular aspect also some of the norms are getting mandatory as far as the safety is concerned. So recently some of the norms such as this driver airbag, speed warning alarm, seat belt reminder 
and the rear parking sensors are being kept mandatory just to have a better driving heart. That's all about this. Thanks for watching.